Hello everyone, it's me Naivin, and today I am making CopperCube 6 tutorial video. CopperCube 6 is a game engine which is available for free. Link is in the description, you can download it and follow along. I know I have not made a CopperCube 6 tutorial video for a while, but here we now. Today I will be making an advanced version of this tutorial, which means that you need to have basics knowledge of this game engine. I highly encourage you to download the game engine and try it out for yourself. Also, you can watch my basics tutorial video and there is a documentation file about CopperCube 6 available for download in the description. Well, today's topic is one which you can actually use a lot if you're creating a horror game, if you're making a basic game, or if you want to try out and make something fun. Today we are talking about doors, how to open and close doors on command. Now before I start every tutorial, I like to refresh the memory and talk about the main window. Here we have five main boxes. We have Scene Graph Explorer, which has all the assets all the 3D or 2D items in the game, as you can see. We have properties which showcase three main parts of the asset. For example, if you click on this cube mesh, it shows the attributes, name, position, rotation, scale, which all we can change, materials, which have all the textures, and behavior, where we can add a behavior so the cube can move, can rotate, and many other things. We have prefabs box right here. Those are assets which come with the game engine on default. So those you can use. I highly encourage you to use other assets, but you can go with those as well. We have the textures window where you can see all the textures used in the game. You can add the texture from this icon right here. And we have the main window. If I click left mouse button, I can move this around, zoom out, zoom in using my mouse wheel scroll, and uh, yeah, that's it. Now, we'll be making a door which you can open and close by command. So first of all, let's delete this cube. You can delete the cube from here, or you can delete the cube from here. All right, so we have nothing in the scene now. So if you want to add something in the scene, we go to create right here. And I want to add a simple plane right here. Let's make the plane, let's make it 200, 200 and click OK. Right here, we have just a simple plane and we can add a camera. Now I talked about the camera. We have multiple cameras in the basics video. I want to have first person camera shooter. So here we are. Now if you go to publish, you know, the drill, and if we click publish and test the application, you can see we have a character, it moves and does all the great things. Now, I want to make a door which I can open and close. How do I do that? First of all, we need a door, right? If you go to prefabs, we ha actually have a door right here. You click on the door twice and it shows up. Now I want to place this door using the arrows right here. Let's place it right here. And when we press play test, we can go to the door and well, the door is, um, it's not opening. What's happening, Nigan? You lied to us. Well. We need to add behavior to this door for it to open. Now, always remember the position and rotation of the door. As you can see, it has this position. And once again, if you go here, it doesn't do anything. Now, I want to click on this door and I want the door to open. Now, which way? As you can see, the door has a little hinge right here. And if we go to rotate, pay attention, and if we click this one, we can rotate the door. 
And meanwhile, pay attention to this, the rotation. Look at this. It changes. So if you want the door to open this way, you should remember that number. If you want to open the door this way, you should remember this number. So that way it goes positive. This way it goes negative. It's very simple. If we press here and press zero, it will go to the rotation it had before. Now I want the door to open this way, right? This, so I remember 92. Well, actually I would change it to 90. As you can see, I want the door to open this way. So I remember this rotation, always remember this, or you can copy, paste it. Now let's go to behavior of this door. Right here, we add a new behavior. All those behaviors I did explain in the basics video. Today, we'll be using behavior trigger by events, which means that when clicked on this to something, when cursor moved over this to something, on proximity do something, every few seconds do something, when a key is pressed to something, I'll do when clicked on this to something. Always click on bounding box text only, and now let's add action. So usually I add this action. Look, look, change rotation of a C node, correct? Look, the current C node, you can remember it was 90, right? Uh, rotation animated, let's put it 400. Okay, now look at this. I go and the door opens. Wait, it doesn't close. What's, what's this side? What is this? The door opens, but it doesn't close. Now, that's where variables come in place. And that's the more advanced part of this tutorial. Now, when I click on this, I want the door to open. But at the same time, when I click on this again, I want the door to close. So what do we do? We create a behavior which says that if a variable has a value, do something. So let's have a variable name just open. You can have any other variable name. You can have just one, you know, just A. You can have B. You can have C, S, sorry, D, C, anything. I choose open, right? So the, when a variable equals open, it has one value, it should do something. So in this case, it should change rotation of the C node once again, 90, uh, rotation animated, 400. You can do whatever you want, but I prefer 400 and the current C node, right? So this should work. Wait, it doesn't work because we need to have this variable already in the game. So we go to new scene right here. We go to this behavior. We add plus and before first drawing, do something. Also on reload, always remember this because every time you start the game, it will do this. So click on this. Now action, we click on this. We go to variables and text, set or change a variable. So we change, we set the variable open to value one. And now if we go here, it will open. Now, Niven, why do we need this complex thing? We can just have click door open and it will open. But here is an interesting part. If we go back to the door, we have this little thing called else. Now, else means that if the variable doesn't have value of one, something else will happen. So what else we want to do? We want the door to close. So if you go here, change rotation of a C node. This one is zero because remember, we want the door to be closed. The current C node, rotation animated, 
400 and let's click OK. All right. Wait, what's happening, Nibin? You are lying to us once again. I'm not. Now, the thing is, in a new 3D scene, you have set or change of variable. So open is one. It will always stay one unless you change it. And right here, when the main action is happening, which means that when the door has value of one and it changes rotation, we want something else to happen. And what else we want to happen? We want the variable open to change. Now you can change this to any number. I usually change it to three. So you can click OK and let's do it one more time. The door opens and the door closes. But look at this. It doesn't open. Why? Because with the same logic, we changed the open variable from one to three. But now we want to change it from three to one again. So what do we do? We go right here to else and we set variable open to one again. And here we have a door which can open, close, open, close, open, close at any given moment. Now, some people may ask, what if there are multiple doors? Like, this is one door, right? So, what do I do? I go to move, I go press right mouse button, clone, and I move it right here. And if we press play, I can go to this door, it will open and close, and then go here and it will open and close, right? The point of this tutorial, once again, is to showcase the simple logic which you can apply to many other things, to keys, to movements, and many else. Also, I use the default prefab, the door. You can add other things also, but remember always to have the correct rotation. You can use Blender or any other software to have another asset in the game. You can click on this, import static mesh, import a door, and always remember one thing, that you should always have the rotation right here, the hinge right here, so it opens like this. That's it guys, that's a very basic, more advanced tutorial of the door. You, are, you can open the door, close the door, and have multiple doors in your game. So it opens, closes, opens, closes, and it goes on and on. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I will be also making other tutorials. Uh, there are links in the description, as I said. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions on what topic should I have next, I will comment, of course. I'll also redirect you to maybe other YouTuber or content creator or CopyCup6 user, which knows way more than I do. So yeah, please free, feel free to ask. And uh, yeah, that was the end of tutorial. I wish you all an amazing day. Goodbye.